if we did want to argue, like we can we can argue about um, metric versus imperial. Like if if you want to if you want to argue about measuring things, like you said earlier, like metric versus imperial, and and let's have the, let's have that out because metric will win. Here's the liberal uh, Muslim himself, Perfect Dawa. What is up, Perfect Dawa? Welcome. Yeah, hi. How are you? Thank you very much. Thanks for coming. Hey, finally. You put a face to the voice. Okay, you've been hiding behind that screen too long, my friend. No, actually, uh, when I'm prepared, <laughs> because I was prepared to uh, go live with uh, yeah, Neil, and then, yeah. uh, yes, it, uh, he postponed it. So that's why I was ready. I need always to be ready, light, everything. <laughs> so that's why. Uh, yeah, we're going to have our discussion. And definitely, yes, we're going to do that. For sure. Yeah. So that's why I show myself now. I'm the question ready. is, what do you want to argue about, though? Uh, uh, actually, I would like to say about uh, my uh, debates with um, uh, AP, two debates with AP. Uh, I would like to just say that I was trying uh, very hard to, uh, you know, to spread the message of peace. And um, unfortunately, uh, you know, he was trying to prove that every Muslim who want to believe have to go and kill uh, a Drek or any you know non-Muslim spreading you know this message that ISIS and the Taliban is spreading. I was giving him the facts from Quran, but he was trying to find something there you know that he doesn't understand. And then uh, you know the the, the thing is that. Uh, it is very difficult for people like him that don't have the right knowledge to know what happened 1400 years ago. 21st century, you know, I follow an organization, Direct, okay? He, within two days, he had never heard about my organization, PMOI or MEK. Just Thursday, he heard about it. Somebody wrote him that, uh, that uh, Susanna that this organization is a sect, is terrorist. Within two days, he decided that this organization is a sect and terrorist, okay? Without asking me a single question, I am alive, the organization is there, you know? Everything is there, he can just research. Somebody cannot research today, okay? When everybody is there and he can ask, how can he ask no things that happened 1400 years ago? That made me quite, you know, upset with him. And I wrote him that you made a big mistake, AP, by just within two days, you come to this conclusion that, uh, uh, you know, um, freedom fighter organization who fight against ISIS regime of Iran is a terrorist organization and is a sect without knowing anything. You know, I would like to ask him this question, how you came to this conclusion within two days? That can, he I, didn't... Yes, can I please. ask, can I yeah, ask you a conclusion? Jump in. Sorry. Yeah, jump in. Yeah, sorry, I don't, I don't know you at all. Uh, I apologize. Um, are you, are you a practicing Muslim? Yes, I'm a practicing. Okay, so I, I, I have, I have certain, my own views on Islam, and I have written before, and in fact, I presented this uh, yes. in speaking engagements before that I think re uh, reading the Quran as carefully as possible, um, and ignoring the Hadith to to a degree, because I actually think the Hadith are worse in this respect. I think that you can't escape that Islam, and I'm not talking about Muslims, I'm talking about Islam. As far as you can have a true Islam, that's really problematic. But as, as, as far as getting as close to the, to the original source material as possible, I think Islam is inherently a violent religion. I think Christianity is a violent religion as well, but I think Islam is too, and it comes from the text. And I, I, and that comes from where you get uh, Muhammad becoming progressively more militaristic over his life, where there's contradictions between the peace, the verses of peace and the verses of violence, the theory of abrogation, which may, means that the later um, verses of the Quran will trump the earlier ones where, where Muhammad was more peaceful in his earlier uh, regime than he was in his later regime where he becomes a more violent militaristic leader so therefore i think it moves towards being being a more violent religion no more violent um source text that that is is when properly read it will real lead quick, the believer to be violent. Troy, Troy has a point we're not being violent enough in our argumentation here right now I mean, we <laughs> need to be yelling if this is going to be fun I'm just kidding uh thank you real quick thank you Troy Miller for the uh for the super chat uh we're, we're gonna have people joining in having a who knows round table have fun enjoying uh each other's company here disagreeing agreeing whatever 
uh, let's have a blast. Let's have a hoot. I got a question Mitch, for Dawa. Mitch, yes, real please, quick, yes. Mitch, someone has obviously run out of hair product. This should help. Well, thank you, my friend. How did you know? I don't know how you could even know that. I mean, like, did you see something different about me? I, I, I <laughs> uh, Mr. Monster, thank you so much. This is going to be fun as right. All right, go ahead. Ask your question. And David Samuel from Down Under. <laughs> I'll tell you what. All right. Hey, guys. How are yeah. you? Hey, how's it going? How are you doing? Yeah, you doing? good Good morning from Australia. It's uh, very early here in, uh, in, uh, in Australia, uh, Wednesday morning. Nice. Uh, happy Tuesday afternoon to you all. Yeah, yeah, you too. Now, Dawa, here's the, here's, here's, the, this is, now you got to really answer to this now. If you're going to defend the Quran, I got two verses for you right now. Yes. Quran 2, 191 says, and kill them wherever you find them and expel them for where they had expelled you. Depression is more serious than murder, but do not fight them at a sacred mosque unless they fight you there. If they fight you, then kill them, such as the retribution of dismissal. And then there's this one, Quran 9, 5, and when the sacred months have passed, then kill the polytheists wherever you find them and capture them and besiege them and sit and wait for them at every place of ambush. But if they should repent, then establish prayer and give. So basically, if they're not a Muslim, kill them. That's basically what they're saying. Okay. Uh, it is like, uh, uh, you know, in Second World War, uh, you, Wilson Churchill gave order to his soldiers to go and g kill Germans. And then today you say that, uh, uh, or somebody, you know, uh, some British say, go and kill Germans and say that, uh, yes, uh, Wilson Churchill told us to kill Germans. It was just that period, okay? He says that if they don't fight you, all right? Quran right. says that if, if they fight you, or if they're polytheists, them. or if they're polytheists. Yeah, not the poly, all, no. It says, he's talking about those polytheists. Yeah, no. It's talking to the people about those polytheists that were living in Mecca and then, there are other verses, uh, you know, uh, ch ch chapter 3, verse 7, okay? If you uh, have it, or I want to, if you want, I can read it for you. Uh, chapter 3, verse 7, explain Quranic verses, okay? First, you have to, my brother, you have to know uh, Quranic verses, how you have to read them and understand it. It says, it is he who has sent down to you, O Muhammad, the book. In it, there uh, are the verses that are precise, uh, they are the foundation of the book and others unspecific as for those in heart uh, in whose hearts is uh, uh, deviation what if i so, want to be a polytheist what yeah, if i what if i believe in polytheism it's my that, tradition okay, for my me, family uh, all right let me let me know please let me explain this one let me read this one and then we understand this one right. okay this is this is explaining how the book has to be read okay well, so it says uh, yes so it says that uh, from uh, in those whose heart is uh, deviation from truth, they will follow that of it which is unspecific, seeking discord and seeking an interpretation suitable uh, to them. And no one knows its true interpretation except Allah and those firm in knowledge. But people with uh, a deviation in heart say, we believe in it, all of it. It is from our Lord. And no one will be reminded except those who. So let me tell you: uh, Are you? Are you? Uh, you know, you're not Allah definitely, and you are not those fear in knowledge. How? But who gets to arbitrate that? Who gets to arbitrate who's firm in knowledge? Because yes, exactly. You know, yes. any yes. anyone could say I'm I'm firm in knowledge of this, and right. it says yes. this, and therefore it's might makes right. Yes, yes. But you, uh, the one who has knowledge, how they they understand it. They put it beside, first of all, they have to put it beside the precise verses of Quran, justice, peace, mercy, all these, and then beside other verses of Quran as well, that when Allah somewhere else says that I do not forbid you from those who do not kill you and expel you from your home to be justice and just and righteous uh, towards them. Allah only forbids you from those who attack you and expel you from your, your, or, your pit, home. or poly. Let me, let me ask. No, I have no, a question. I have a question. It says that the no compulsion hey, Dawa, Dawa, yes, Dawa. Yes, the yes, question please. I have is this the, and I just read a few different books, uh, yes. going down to Texas. One was by, uh, Leslie Hazelton talking about after the prophet, the Sunni Shia split 
and also Leslie Hazelton on the first Muslim uh, talking about Muhammad and his life and the conquest and all of that. And then after his life, the conquest that leads up for the next century, Yes, they went into lands that literally had nothing to do with them. Like they, they went and conquered people and expanded the empire of the Islamic empire in, in regions well beyond the scope of Arabia. And I mean, really it's a historical feat that people look at and go, Whoa, nobody has, done that kind of power other than the Mongolians, right? The Mongolians in the 13th century, they did a little more. Of course, they expanded their empire larger than what Islam did. And a lot of Muslims will say, well, that's evidence of the proof that God was on their side. Well, I guess God was on the Mongolian side as well. And then the Americans who defeated the British, you know, you can go on and on. But the point is that conquest, yes, there were treaties, you know, look, are you going to be peaceful? Are you going to pay your taxes? Are you going to convert? Which eventually, I don't think at first they may have tried to convert people. There's a dispute in scholarship on whether these Muslims actually were trying to make other Muslims. Um, that's kind of wrestled within scholarship, but I doubt that they were going to these other lands out there, conquering them and going, all right, we're on your property. Now you swing a sword th first so that we can justifiably kill you on your land. They right. were conquesting like all the other nations around them. So when people try to bash Islam, right, they always want to talk about how bloodthirsty it is, period. That's how all of the cultures and the nations were. There was Heracles. The Roman Empire was fighting against the Persians. The Persians were fighting against the Romans, and they had problems with the Arabs, and everything kept – it's not like they were the only ones doing this stuff. So what I don't get is – defending that this wasn't a bloodbath conquest back in this time because everyone was doing this to try and conquer land instead we're trying to pacify it make it a peaceful thing like this wasn't what was going on at the time i would much rather see muslims like you come on the scene who are more progressive who are saying put down the guns put down the swords let's find a way to make jihad inner peace inner struggle i mean that's what I would rather be. And sure, there is the idea of inner struggle, but jihad isn't just inner struggle. The scholars out there are saying there was real warfare and then there was the internal warfare, the spiritual warfare. So when one tries to make it all pretty, all nice, and only in defense, my red flags start coming up because anyone who knows the history of the conquest of these things will look and go, yeah, there was a lot of that they were doing in the name of Allah. And there was a lot of Christians doing it in the name of Jesus and a lot of Jews doing it in the name of Yahweh. And, you know, this is just the way it was. I don't see any reason to try and defend it. If All right. Sense. Yes. Uh, I would like to say, uh, Derek, that uh, Imam, companion of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, uh, as I know, Ali, radiallahu, who was his cousin, uh, his son-in-law, and the first man who converted to Islam, I know that he was against this uh, occupying other countries because Quran says fight as long as they fight and when they stop fighting you stop fighting too okay because Allah doesn't like those who uh, continue to fight all right so if somebody went wrong they even killed each other yeah later our uh, companion they started some of them wanted uh, the power they started to kill each other so it doesn't have anything with the uh, the scripture they went wrong some of them did I mean, this is clear. Okay, if these, uh, uh, you know, countries or uh, emperor, they were uh, threatening them, okay, and they wanted to defend themselves, that's something else. But uh, I don't have any record that they were threatening them. So if they, they did it, they just went to occupy these countries, then they went against Quran. Whoever, uh, uh, you know, did that went against Quranic verses that Allah doesn't like those who start the mm -hmm. fight. Okay. Now what about so, now what about the pot? Let's let's say I'm living in Arabia in 637, and yes. I my my family was polytheist for the last 500 years. I want to stay polytheist. Yes, it says in the Quran that they should kill me, but give me a chance to to convert. That that's merciful, right? Uh, no, it is not like that. That uh, you should be killed. And it that's says that says. no, no, no. It 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 doesn't say. It is. Uh, only those who attack you, only who, those who... No, it's not here. I'll pull no, it up right no, now. Okay. When we know the record that when he occupied, when he occupied Mecca, he forgave everybody, okay? He didn't say that you must become, uh, uh, you know, Muslim. They converted them, themselves uh, slowly, slowly. So Mecca was full of of, of the, um, um, yeah. what was the name of his tribe? The, Mecca was where his family was. I mean, it's Quraish. not like Let me Quraish. read this verse like, one more time. Yeah, already, yeah, read, let me read this verse one more time. And when the sacred months have passed, kill the polytheist 
wherever you find them and capture them and besiege them and sit and wait for them at every place of ambush. Quran nine five. Yes. Let me a hey, real quick, real quick. Right. I got to yeah. read AP's super chat. Apostate prophet in the chat. Thank <coughs> you so much for the super chat. It's pathetic that perfect Dawa now tries to disparage me and depict me as a bigot after performing so horribly in a debate. Nobody takes his fake care bear Islam seriously. Go convince Muslims first. I'm going to do that. I'm, I'm trying. Unfortunately, they block me. But uh, we have that. But you should, uh, AP, you should learn that not just by uh, somebody say something, you just decide that uh, this organization or that organization is terrorist. You should first, uh, you know, it is 21st century. We have, uh, you know, a lot of uh, on Google. You should at least ask me. They say this one. What do you think? What is your answer? Instead, in two days, you decide that, oh, this organization is uh, a sect and terrorist, okay? So, Dua, uh, just, just to confirm, um, when, when there are, you know, verses in the Quran, 66, 9, for example, strive hard, jihad, against the unbelievers and the hypocrites and be firm against them, their abode is hell, an evil refuge indeed, those kind of things. So when, when you get these uh, moments in the Quran, which... I, personally, I found dehumanizing. I read the Quran and I felt dehumanized. I felt <coughs> who I was as a humanist, as a non-believer, I, I felt really uncomfortable reading it. But, but nonetheless, are you saying that all of these problematic verses are contextualized away because they are only um, relevant to the time in which they are set? And, and as soon as that time is over, it's now a generalized I still uh, haven't gotten a response about, right, okay. about, I, about killing polytheists. Yeah. So yeah, look, I, I real quick, David, David, your mic, when you're typing on the type, the keyboard, uh, David, it's making a call. I'll, I'll, I'll mute it. I'll mute it. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank can you, you. Can you address the, the, the verse yes. about killing polytheists? Okay. Yes, and then yes. there's someone in the chat so that I didn't read the full thing. Fine, I'll read the full thing. All right. After it says to kill them in every place of ambush, it says, but if they should repent, establish prayer and give zakah, let them yeah. go their way. So it's basically, how is that zakah. any better? Okay. Yes. Let me tell you. Okay. Uh, he asked me a question and you should uh, know it is exactly that when they accepted the peace treaty, which was 10 years, okay. Muslim, they didn't have the right to go and kill polyesthetes, okay? They, they were talking to them and they were converting to, uh, them to Islam. So there were no any killing. There were no Prophet Muhammad. The exact moment they wrote that, uh, you know, that agreement, those verses are abrogated for that moment. Those verses why are... People, why is it in the Quran then? Why is it in the Quran then? The Quran's for, is, the Quran's yeah, for is, right people to read yeah. today, right? Yes, no, look. It is in Quran because if Adolf Hitler attack you, yes, you have the right to use that verse and go and kill Germans. It's about you polytheists. It has nothing to do with war. It's about polytheists. It is about enemies. They were enemies of the Muslim at that time. Okay, so it, it says was... find polytheists and kill them. That's all it says. Okay, and. I'm uh, sorry. I'm sorry. That, that, I'm not trying to bother you, but it's, that's what no. it says. Well, right. even right. even perfect Dawah, even if it is for that time, and granted, that's the case, Nil. The problem is that's not how a lot of Muslims are reading this today. They yes. can't wait for Muslims to destroy the enemy. They see progressive societies like us in the West as total enemies. All you got to do is see Daniel Hakikachu and other people like that. It's it's obvious that they're reading this at face value and most muslims are unlike you you're the one who's like well let's no not go most away. no but, uh, derek please not most there are lots of muslims i have almost five thousand friends on facebook when i put these things um 80 of them love it okay they like it so yes it depends on from where you uh, you know you choose right, these right. muslims yeah for example uh in uh Egypt, uh, they were saying that 67% they, uh, you know, they agree with the killing apostates. So right. uh, I want to tell you, as I read for you, chapters three, verse seven, uh, um, uh, male, okay, I read for you that one, uh, that means that you have to put the, that verse you read beside these verses that say it's chapter 60, verse eight says that Allah does not forbid you from those who do not fight you because of religion and do not expel you from your homes. From being righteous towards them and acting justly towards them, indeed Allah loves those who act justly. Okay, so when you put it beside this, 
if you, uh, sorry, I'm sorry to say it like this, if you are ISIS, if you are, you know, Taliban, you might not understand it, but somebody like me understand it that I have no, there is no compulsion in religion that I go and kill direct on my neighbors because they don't believe in what I believe. There is no compulsion. Only the only right I have is the last option, not the first option. Our prophet, he was 13 years preaching Islam and he was attacked. His followers were killed. He ran away. He didn't want to fight. At the end, when they he was forced, Allah said, okay, fight as long as they fight. When they stop fighting, you stop fighting too, because Allah doesn't like those who start the fight. So it depends on who you are to read this Quran. Okay. Those scholars that you say they read Quran and say Allah has two hands. He has two right hands. I mean, these people are totally out of their mind. He's a scholar and say Allah has two right hands. Excuse me, because Quran says the Jews try to tie Allah's hands. This is metaphorical, Mr. I, scholar. Okay? I think I think we've got a real tension here in, in the fact that um, <laughs> I, I would love all Muslims in the world to be like you, Perfect Dua. Uh, okay. so, so in me, there, there's an internal tension because I would love progressive Islam to, to win out. But the yeah. problem is when I read the Quran, I don't interpret it as, as you do. I'd like to interpret it like you do, but I, I, I don't think that's that's the correct interpretation. And and this is a real problem for me. When I when I was giving talks about uh, Islam and violence uh, years back, I had this real issue with feeling really bad about delivering this because it could be used as as ammunition by right wingers to 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 to. to like foment Islamophobia on the one hand, but on the other hand, it's also the truth. Like, do we, for, for me, I know you don't think that our position here is a truth, but uh, but for me, I think, do we try and quieten down the truth to to tr to foster social cohesion and a more progressive Islam? I think it's a really interesting discussion. Real quick, Black Lion Supreme, thank you for the super chat. You enslaved Africans for over 1,000 years in the name of Islam. Stop begging the question and answer these gentlemen directly. So I think he's talking to you, Dawa, but... Um, I, I know a lot of weight and pressure is being put on you about this, but yeah. in particular, one question I'd like to ask to, to pick up on what was just said wow. is why do you believe it at all? I mean, really, we could talk about the interpretation of this and theology, theology that tied his right hand. This is allegory, internal struggles, what jihad mm -hmm. means. It doesn't mean outward struggle, whatever. Uh, we could do that all day long, but really at the end of the day, were you always this kind of Muslim and – were you like raised in this? Is that why you are a Muslim? Like, whereas me and let's say Jonathan, probably nil, I would suspect. I, I can't speak for everybody on the panel, but we want to, we're, we're looking <coughs> critically at these things. And we need to start with a methodology that allows us to be able to ascertain what is probably true about these things, not esoterically or based on just simple experience. I, I felt that this is true or these words rang true to me. Uh, be kind to your neighbor is an old common human understanding. Every religion says it. So now every religion's true. No, it's just something that we all as humans understand. So the question is why believe Islam at all? Why not take a progressive position, recognize that there are different ways to interpret it, but why do you believe? All right. Uh, very short, I will say uh, first uh, uh, to, um, sorry, Jonathan. Okay, very short. And then I will answer your question. Ali is, uh, he was the, the, I said, the closest person to Prophet Muhammad. And he rose to his uh, governor of Egypt, Malik. Malik kindness, forgiveness, and loving the people should be your priority. And do not attack them like a wild animal because people are too uh, groups. One is those who are your brothers uh, by religion and one those who are your brothers by creation. So you are my brothers by creation and uh, this is what I learned from Islam. And you, to your question, uh, uh, question direct, I was an atheist at the age of 25, okay? I became atheist because I started to think that, oh God, does, does God exist? After a few days, I came to this conclusion that no, God doesn't exist. Later, I got good, uh, you know, knowledge and then i realized that uh, yeah because of this because of that no god exists i was wrong okay there were scientific uh, facts but i am muslim because i see that we are living in a jungle with the jungle rules in this jungle everybody want to kill each other everybody want to rob each other everybody uh, you know 
want to become richer and richer. It's a pure jungle. If you are strong, you get the most. If you are weak, you get little or nothing and have to die. I don't want to live in this jungle. I want to live in a human world, okay? Peace, love, and everybody have uh, the same opportunity. So I saw the way out of this jungle in Islam, okay? Islam says that get rid of this jungle and live, uh, you know, in a human world, which we, I call it equal world, okay? That we share everything with each other. We love one another. And I have every single evidence proof that Islam, we stand towards Mecca every day, say, say to God, show me the right way. The but right I, think, way. I think humanism could do that with yeah. secular morality. All right, okay. Really well, good. humanism, yeah. Buddhism, yes. Buddhism yeah, right. does okay. this. Yes, no, no, no. None of them have. Let me see humanism. Jonathan, uh, if you give me the, the uh, you know, the answer, the solution to, you know, tobacco kills 5 million people every year, just tobacco. If you give me the solution to this problem, if you solve it, then I see that you have the solution, okay? Can you please tell me what is the solution to get rid of this big problem? It is 33 nuclear bomb, Hiroshima nuclear bomb every year. And we don't hear it at all. So can you tell me? Yeah, decent legislation based on the best available evidence and evidence-based policy making based on again yeah. best available evidence. I mean, yeah, I don't because... know what I don't know how you can draw that analogy to religion in any way other than to say Allah says don't use tobacco. Well, then what's no, no, no. the reason? What would Allah say for no, any kind of you know? So, but I, I don't know why you draw that analogy. But that's no, but evidence I, evidence-based I, policy making based on on the best available <laughs> evidence. And evidence. So, uh, so let's yeah. let to, let's Gary from Topic discuss also Sorry. respond because uh, I'd like to get his opinion. Well, I'd like to know what happened to your hair, Derek. I haven't I haven't seen you in a while. <laughs> I stuck my finger in a light That's, socket. <laughs> that is the coolest hair I've seen you, bro. That's like that. I'm like it. I'm like I said, that's. That's Harry Krishna style. I don't know what's going on. Maybe you haven't told me something, or I don't know what's going on mm -hmm. behind the scenes. But yeah, Convert I hear every up. cult leader starts with his hair like this. So I'm just well, having, yep. having said That's that. True. Did you see that video that I sent with um, with AJ? Uh, that, uh, no. What? Well, yeah, check your check your message. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Darway, um, that happens to be my name in Chinese. Believe it or not, um, I just want to know. Just clarify something. Um, I mean, is it really? I mean, do you really believe that um, the Prophet Muhammad, Muhammad uh, cut the moon in half? Did he really fly on a winged horse to heaven? Is that just uh, like a myth to you, or is that actual truth? It's uh, it's just a, uh, I tell you, it's a trash lie by uh, some uh, you know liars who wanted to sell their books. Okay, because nowhere in Quran, Quran talk a lot about uh, miracle of Prophet Moses. Okay, that he dropped his stick, became snake. Okay, but he Quran is silent. I can read for you verses of Quran that say, "Oh Muhammad, you don't need any miracle because well, we gave." So this just, is the problem. This is yes. this is the problem though. Is we spend all religions, my religion, Derek's religion, wherever we came from all spend, especially today in the 21st century, are spending a lot of time trying to um, like put lipstick on a pig. And it's still a mm. pig, right? And I don't mean that like religions are pigs. What I'm trying to say is that religions <coughs> are, are almost, well, they are always made up to try to make sense of things that we don't understand. And as soon as science comes along and, and reasonable and rational thinking comes along, uh, religions have to adjust and say, oh, well, we knew that all along. The, the truth is, in the 21st century, regardless of what was said in, in uh, the Quran or in the Bible or in the Book of Mormon, for that matter, what are religions doing today that are actually helpful to society? And here's an example. What we see is fundamentalists in every religion right. reject science. And we're seeing it, it's rampant. So for example, mm -hmm. in India and in Africa, we're seeing increased rates of polio. I, guys, we eradicated polio in the 80s and 90s, and it's coming back. And who do we have to blame for that? Fundamentalist religion, specifically in India and in Africa, it's fundamentalist Muslims. So I don't understand why we are working so desperately to try to, you know, uh, 
pretend as though religions have a place in the 21st century when in reality, the, the one religion we've seen that has tried to do this and, and advance itself into modern times is Catholicism, right? They had Vatican II and they said, yeah, we, we accept the Adam, that Adam and Eve is just allegory. We also accept that um, evolution is real. But what good has the Catholic Church done since then, except try to modernize and make themselves relevant? I just don't understand why we are trying so hard to make religions fit into a modern or postmodern 21st century world where they actually cause more harm than good. Okay, real quick, before we let uh, Dawa respond, I just want to take the super chat and show you guys something here. Why so religious? Thank you for the super chat. If Allah leads Muslims to truth, then why has he misled so many Muslims to falsehood about true Islam? that perfect dawah has and then um if even if muhammad didn't split the moon i have if you don't believe me here is an actual right. recording what happened <laughs> Can I, can I just say, can I just say Derek, funny. That, that, okay. that, that question is a really good, really important All question. Right. Yeah, because that'd at be the fun. end of the day, as soon as you have a revelation, a divine revelation, whether it's the Bible or the Quran, where people are split over the interpretation, you just have a prima facie poor revelation. And as soon as you've got a poor revelation and people fighting over it, this does not talk about God wanting to unite the world un under belief in him or her or it. You know, any kind of prob problematic approach to interpretation, any kind of difference and disagreement, and not to just mention, tells me it's a human text. Not to mention the Quran talks about Maktub, which is, means destiny, means that he's in control of everything. He's putting everything in motion. And this is the result. He's got a bunch of Muslims running around misinterpreting his book. I mean, well, most well, most Muslims misinterpret it. I'm, and I'm not saying more aren't starting to possibly be more progressive <laughs> and gentle, but what it is, it is, you know, something that I'd like to see more progression take place. I don't expect us to be able to convince Muslims to stop believing. I understand right. how deep faith and tradition and <clears throat> like, I know what it's like to have the claws of cognitive dissonance hit me and I can't let go. But I would much rather people put down their weapons, just like you're saying, Dawa. So we're on your side in that sense. Where your values agree with progressive ideas, we are 100% on your team, and we do not want to be uh, antagonist on that. What yes. we are trying to say is, why do we need Islam at all? If we can right. show you that the values of humanity have progressed, our morals and the way that we've developed in societies where science-based reason science, right. can draw us those conclusions right. rather than ancient superstitions that, and that came, that, that came from humans it came yes. from humans all right okay can i ask uh, can i answer that question first of all can I? a lot did, uh, yes can, uh, a lot a lot didn't guide uh, misguide people he guided people but unfortunately these people they stand towards mecca 1400 years they say show me the right way they cannot see the right way. It is not a last fault. This is their. Oh, hang on! I'm going to stop you. I'm going to stop you. I'm going to stop you. Right. So, okay. so God has full omniscience. Right. Is full divine knowledge. Is knowledge knows the future designs and creates humans we didn't design and create ourselves like we are the creation we are the contingent creations of a necessary being supposedly as okay. according to yourself so how and so 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 your allah god would know in advance that humans would not be able to correctly interpret the the divine revelation in some way and would stand the wrong way or do whatever you're saying that they've done mm -hmm. wrong and blame it on humans but if god designed and created us and designed and created this world in the divine foreknowledge that that's what would come about and chose this world over all the other hypothetical worlds he could have created and chose this world you cannot blame us for doing what god designed and created us to do I'm sorry. Okay. I, I think that personally, exactly. I think that's a huge. Problem. All right. Okay. All that's, right. Uh, all right. That's reverse reasoning, and that's what I was going to say. Okay. Uh, I, I would. I would answer you. Uh, like you can't. You can't. Well. You can't. Can, you... okay. can I talk? All right. Uh, the, uh, Go he ahead. Has, yes, he has created uh, a lot of other, uh, you know, living creatures, uh, other places, and I don't know. Maybe he has created uh, uh, a lot of them perfect, you know, 
uh, the way you want, but he has decided to create us in this way and he wanted us to develop, okay? I understand it, you may not understand it, but we are here, we have these problems, and I would like to ask you again, because you didn't give me the answer, how you are going to get rid of this problem, because I know the source of every single problem is one, the jungle, and the rules of the jungle. So if you give me not just uh, some words, if you give me the, the real uh, solution, okay, to uh, the tobacco, I said. Uh, I, I, not, I, I literally, I, I, I don't understand what you're saying. So you, yes. I don't understand what how you define the jungle. Like, is that just the world and all? Its all right, okay. Let me let me help you. Let, let me help you. Okay, in this jungle, one percent of the uh, population of the world they own one hundred ten trillion dollars, which is fifty percent of the total capital of the planet. And that one percent would not stop there. They want to become richer and richer. They spread conflict. They want to sell their weapons. They want to occupy other countries. They sell drugs. They human trafficking is just one hundred fifty billion dollars, uh, you know, uh, business for them. Tobacco. They make billions of dollars because they sell tobacco and kill five million dollars. They don't care about uh, people's life. So the solution is in Islam to get rid of this system that allow them to make so much money by killing so five actually, million what, people what, really? in this world. You're just, talking, you're just talking politics. Big you are job. literally talking politics. Is so is my, no, my, hang, on, hang on. My answer to what you would say would be effective representative governance, where governance, when you okay. talk about moral, when you talk about regulation and political governance, you are actually talking about morality. It's just on a writ large. It's not an individual morality. It's morality for a society. So what you're saying is how do you solve these problems? It can be any problem, right? It can be the environment, tobacco, whatever you want to call yes, it. Yes, yes. Right? So it, you solve problems that are society-wide problems or global problems with, with uh, interconnected teamwork and working through a representative uh, effective governance uh, that 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 is 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 effective which means it, it does its job well um that's what you do so if, if if you want to do that through islam you can do that you can get a theocracy you can imagine a theocracy that is some kind of benign theocratic regime that comes about that brings these things about but also through such a theocracy i mean it's 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 just ripe for being for 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 being a very <coughs> bad form of ruling as well and and terrible things happening because you only have to look at the global peace index to disprove what you're saying so if you look at all the islamic countries in the world and look at the human rights uh um violations that are taking place you're looking at health and well-being and you're looking at um all, all the metrics of of well-being and success in life uh you you will find that islamic countries are, are doing the, some of the worst in the world uh, there is no just go, and, go and look at go and look at the global oh. peace index they they all they all also run by the jungle rules okay which is totally against for example my home country iran okay is run by a bunch of mafia terrorists murderers who were put there in power by the west 1979 because there was a revolution against a dictator which was put there in 1953 again by usa and uk uh, this is known by everybody, CIA, they released the, 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 you know, the evidences a few years ago that they were involved in that, uh, you know, this, uh, okay. uh, Let me ask no, you just this. a moment, let me continue. Mr. Sander, he was saying in one of his rallies that if we didn't bring down Dr. Mossad in 1953, there wouldn't be a revolution, they wouldn't miss this, yes, if they, you didn't involve in our, you know, country, there wouldn't be Ayatollah fascist Khomeini in power in 1979. And the West has been supporting, supporting this terrorist fascist I've, government I've, I've, to I've sell a, their weapons. All right, let me I've ask you this. I've got to pop out for a second. No, Neil, because I've got to pop out. Uh, right. uh, so my last thing would be, Dawa is appealing to a perfect form of his religion, right? So he, he's not appealing to Islam as we see it around the world. He's saying, no, he's, no, exactly. he, I've, got, no. I've got this perfect idea of what Islam should be. It, it is that not mine. No, yeah, okay, or, or whatever, it's not yours, but it's one you are you are advocating, right? So my he's interpretation, got, yeah. My, yes, yes, yes. So he's yeah. saying, I've got this perfect idea of Islam, and this is how the world's answers will be solved. What I'm yes. saying is I've got a per perfect idea of representative democracy, and it doesn't happen in any, any country around the world, but, it, but, if, it, but if it could uh, exist in a way that I would envisage it, then the problems would be solved as well. We are appealing to ideal forms of whatever we think are 
uh, are our worldviews. But but I, I would just say that that um, my worldview would be far more evidence based and and representative and appealing to evidence based policy making than I think a theocratic regime would be. Yeah. I didn't talk about theocratic regime. Jonathan, can you tell me how many types of democracy can exist? Can you ask? Can I ask you this question? Hey, final question. Yeah, then no, I want to move, me, me I wanna move on. I want to move on out of talked, Islam completely, no, Dawa. Yeah, so, yeah, just a moment. He talked about democracy. How many types of democracy can exist? Well, can the, how many? How many? How many forms of democratic yes. voting? Like no, democratic about, de democracy. Well, it depends how you do how there is two define. types there is two types can you tell me uh, what are those two types only no you mean, right. you mean constitutional it is yeah. it is it is direct and indirect democracy in time okay? what's up brother so you're talking, you about, something, Good, you're talking you. about something Good. that you even don't know exactly what you're talking about let me just it say one direct and indirect democracy indirect democracy is what we have now in the west okay and direct democracy would be of course much much better than indirect democracy so i know very much deep in this uh you know right. Right. here's here's right. it. Right. let me say this real quick let me say this real quick. on one hand I'm, i got i got constitutional republics democracy i got science i got uh laws against monopolies i have you know facts based with ev evidence and facts and this hand i got the quran what do you think is in this now you you had a problem you said the, the problem is one percent owns all the money and everyone else it's the law of the jungle and then you jump from there to the quran has a solution to that well what how is that how do you where do you get from that point a that's a huge leap in logic hey, so does the new testament in Acts it's chapter happening. one and two, the Christians sold everything they own and they were in a communist community where everyone together shared equally. I mean, we don't need the Quran. We could just go to the New Testament and believe in Christianity. I'm that's just making the that's point. Great. That, that's great. That's great. But I'm saying that's the point <laughs> it is. didn't come. No, Derek, that didn't come from them. They got a, a good message from their Lord. Okay, they understand him. But I say that the perfect one, it is the same, but the perfect you know the 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 tools of that world is uh, perfectly implemented in Islam. Okay, which is praying towards Mecca five times a day. Can I ask you a question? Okay. Yes, please. Yes. Can I ask you a question real quick? Yes, please. Because you you just said something that I find very interesting. Um, how is Islam the perfect religion? And it's the youngest of the religions that we're talk that 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 are on the table. Okay, uh, it is the last final message. I mean, I don't think that uh, that's um, because he God sent his message uh, step by step. Okay, and he completed by uh, by Prophet Muhammad. He put all uh, tools in Islam, and that became uh, the latest. So because it's youngest, it doesn't mean that it is uh, you know wrong. Right. I want to make a, I want to make a quick point. I think you're right, and I think the newer ones would give more credibility because they've they've evolved and they've made they've corrected the mistakes of the older ones, which is why I think the fact that that uh, Joseph Smith uh, spoke to God and and um, interpreted the plates that makes that the most credible religion, uh, Mormonism, does it not? Okay. I, I don't know. I don't know much right. about Mormonism because Mormonism, I as I know, they have. Uh, you know, they, Dawa, they, Dawa. They are, Look, we've, we've gone for 40, 40 minutes, my friend. I do appreciate you coming in and talking about this. And we will have more conversations yes, down but the road. But can I, I have a, Derek, can I have a uh, final to... statement? And then I got to yes, let yes, you go. Yes, I got to let yes. you go. All right. Can, uh, can you please, uh, uh, you know, arrange a debate between me and, uh, you know, one of these extremists like how you get you? Who? <laughs> you know? How could get you or somebody like him? He won't so, respond to me right now. Yeah, um, because I'm looking for, yes, I'm very much looking if for. If he him. responds to me, I will absolutely be happy to set something like that up and okay. go from there for sure. Because yeah. I'm all game for stuff like yeah. that. To prove, to you know, to fight these people, somebody like me must teach them, show to uh, everyone that these people. Bring your no belt. Idea. I want you to spank yeah. him, okay? I want yes, you to yeah. spank him. Yeah. Thank uh, you. And but I seriously, would, thank you for your kindness. Yes. I appreciate you being such ah, a yes. kind person. I will continue this on my channel. Everybody, anybody who would like to talk to me, I will continue right away there. All right. The perfect thank you, Yes. The perfect thank you, my friend. Thank you. Take care. Bye -bye. you have a good day. Yeah. Thank you. You too. Thank you. All right. So um, awesome. Uh, we talked about Islam. Now I have put the link down in the chat.
So if you are interested in joining, I really appreciate all the super chats. I, I'm going to read out your super chats and try to make sure you guys get the attention and the question answered and things like that. But, um, yeah, uh, Yo, no Derek. matter what, at the end of the day, I'm going to disagree with, with – I mean, the historians I've been reading and stuff about what happened, uh, it sounds more like he's a Quran onlyist right? So Yo, um, it, it just seems that way. Yeah, 